working on a large Stuart model steam plant, part 11, preparing and painting the baseboard, setting the safety valve and yet another dribbling drain cock. First of all, I have to do something about this baseboard. Believe it or not, this is actually a sample of a kitchen worktop. I think it's made of some kind of oak. The problem is, if you spill any water on it at all, I mean clean water, not dirty water and oil, it turns black. And I really can't do with this, it looks horrible. So what I'm going to do is paint it. I rub down the baseboard thoroughly using my orbital sander. And even after rubbing down the baseboard with the orbital sander, you can still see the staining, but not for long. Here comes the first coat of primer. This is red oxide primer. I'm going to give the baseboard a couple of coats of this primer and then rub it down thoroughly and then follow it with a black top coat, allowing plenty of time for the red oxide primer to dry. This is the stuff that I use, normal car paint type red oxide primer. Time now to set the safety valve on the boiler. I'm attaching a piece of silicone rubber tubing to this fitting on top of the turret. On the end of this short piece of pipe to the valve is a coned union, and once I fitted a cable tie, I pulled the silicone rubber tubing back until the cable tie part of it was up against the cone union. This should stop the silicone rubber pipe from slipping off the copper pipe once I apply some pressure, but to be on the safe side, I've used some more cable ties. A quick word of caution from my experience when using cable ties. As you chop off the excess piece, and it's a good idea to do that so they don't poke you in the eye, the resultant chopped off end of the cable tie is incredibly sharp, and I mean razor sharp. Over the years I've cut myself a few times using cable ties like this, and when I use silicone rubber tubing and cable ties in a permanent installation, I always melt the ends of the cable ties. You can use a cigarette lighter or similar to do this. With one end of the silicone rubber tubing fastened to the boiler fitting, and the other end fastened to my airline fitting, it's time to adjust the safety valve. I'm using a pair of circlet pliers, first of all to slacken off the outer ring, which is a lock nut, and then to adjust the position of the inner part of the assembly. If you screw the inner part in a clockwise direction, this will compress the spring more, and the safety valve will blow off at a higher pressure. By moving it anti-clockwise, as shown here, you will reach a point when the air pressure that's inside the boiler starts to blow out of the safety valve. The maximum working pressure of this boiler, according to the boiler certificate, is 60 pounds per square inch, but it's been hydraulically tested by Stuart Models, when it was new, to 120 pounds per square inch, which is twice the working pressure. This clip shows why it's essential to have an outer locking ring. As the safety valve initially blows off and makes this strange noise, the vibration causes the centre part to move about. I'll show the first clip one more time, this is before I tightened the outer ring. And that's why safety valves like this have an outer locking mechanism. On a compressed air test like this, the valve will make that funny noise. But when the boiler's in steam, the safety valve should pop and then just make a hissing noise as the steam escapes. When I made this video, I didn't have the boiler certificate stating the pressure. It was sent to me by the customer from whom I bought the entire steam plant. The correct working steam pressure is £60 per square inch, not 75 as shown here. I noticed that the housing for the pressure gauge was loose, so I took it off to have a look at it, and you can see why the screws are loose. So I'm tightening up the screws, and now there should be no more looseness of the casing. I think I'll give the glass a clean, because of this position obviously the glass is uppermost and gets dirty. I notice the hissing noise around the water gauge, so I'm investigating, and I can feel it blowing air from the bottom of the water gauge. Oh no, not yet another dribbling drain cock. Yes, unfortunately this one leaks. In fact, the only drain cocks that I've found that do not leak are the ones from a company called 21st Century Steam. But I can't use one of those in this application because the threads on them are too small for this. From my personal experience, often drain cocks from a very well-known company who supply them leak very badly. I'm going to try and lap it in using some tea cut. I've applied a small amount of this to the tapered part and now I'm moving it back and forth for a lot longer than I showed here, which with a bit of luck will make the valve steam tight, although I can't say I'm very confident about this. The original drain cock that I fitted to this boiler leaked so badly I had to tighten the nut to clamp the handle in place. 
it's time now to test it and guess what the drain cock is still leaking I use a ruler to deflect the air which tells me where it's leaking from so that's it I've had it with these type of drain cocks I'm going to use my method I can't use my method in this video though because I don't have the parts I need to take a trip to my friend Chris English at CMA Engineering and buy some good parts from him in order to test the boiler I've fitted a temporary blanking plug and once again I'm using the ruler which creates turbulence and tells me where the air leaks are coming from but this time there aren't any air leaks and that concludes this episode thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful please take the time to visit my mainstream models website click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch